very overwhelming at sometimes with the patients I've had. Uh, their face, you, it says it all usually, their gratitude. Uh, I really don't do it for their gratitude, I do it to help them out. It's something I love to do and it can help someone else. So it's easy to put the two together. Brian Stinson flies for Angel Flight Central, a nonprofit organization that provides transportation to people like Kevin Inman, who can't get to the places that provide necessary and sometimes life-saving treatment. Earlier this year, Kevin was diagnosed with melanoma in his leg. They uh, took out 21 of the lymph nodes and two of them came back as uh, positive. So uh, they started me on a uh, protocol which is, a, I guess, an experimental drug down there, MD Anderson. Often people who are diagnosed with life-threatening illnesses need help from specialists in medical facilities located thousands of miles away. A lot of them come to us at the end of their treatment phase. They've been to the local specialist. They've been through regular healthcare treatment. They've been through the resources that are easily and readily available to them, and by the time they hit us, they are ready to seek clinical trials, experimental treatment specialists that are across the country. Um, they are looking for their last hope, and we're, we're literally giving hope wings every day. Since it began in 1995, Angel Flight has flown over six million air miles and helped thousands of families get access to specialized medical care. They do care about the people that they're flying to these hospitals and stuff. And without them, a lot of people wouldn't be able to go to some of the better hospitals. And I think um, MD Anderson is probably one of the best hospitals in the nation. I don't live too far from here. Where you live at? Right there. Oh, you're in Caney, that's right. Well, I live in Tyro, actually, you know where Tyro no, I don't. Founded by a gentleman named Jim Stevens, who is a cancer survivor twice over and successful business entrepreneur. And he was told after his second round of cancer going into remission that he really needed to decrease the stress in his life. At that point, he decided to retire. And in his retirement, he picked up some new hobbies, flying being one of them. Jim and his wife, who was a pastor at the Methodist Church at the time, met a foster family in the congregation that would change the direction of Jim's life. The little boy that they were caring for needed some very specialized medical care, and um, it was not available in Kansas City where they lived, and was only available through a specialist in Ohio. But they had no way to get there, or so they thought. And Jim said, hmm. I'm not doing anything, I've learned how to fly, why don't I, you know, load them up in the plane and let's go. So that's what they did and it was just a very moving experience for him. It was not only the child's first flight, it was the parents' first time in the year as well. It was just a very, you know, exciting time in what was otherwise a very difficult situation, you know, and that's oftentimes what Angel Flight is to our passengers, we're brief bright moments in, in what is otherwise a very challenging time. When they started, Jim planned to do just two flights a month, but they ended up doing a few more than that. 77 the first year. It was, it just took off literally, no pun intended. And they really realized at that point that there was a much larger need out there for people who really didn't have any other resources to get from point A to point B. And point B is where life-saving care often lay. How many flights have you done now, Brian? I've done 16. There's actually an incredible demand for this kind of help. On average, an angel flight like this one takes place every 30 minutes. Across the United States, about 20,000 charitable flights like this, non-emergency charitable flights, take place every year. 20,000, it's, you know, it's a small airline when you think about it. Here in the Midwest, we're doing quite a few as well. Yeah, 13 years later, we are nearly at 1,800 flights a year. So we're averaging about five missions a day being flown, and uh, that's a pretty significant increase over a short period of time. Angel Flight is funded entirely through charitable donations from individuals, foundations, and corporations. 
For every dollar donated, Angel Flight arranges approximately $3 in free transportation. We actually have a very small team. Um, there are only uh, eight of us in, in our organization that are paid. However, we have an entire team of 1,200 people, most of whom are volunteer, making that happen across the Midwest. Well, we often say that a cost of a mission is approximately $1,300, with a 1,000 of that coming from the volunteer pilots. It's what they donate. Um, in value, and the $300 piece of that equation is what it takes to run the entire organization. Many passengers are already financially strapped by the medical bills they've already racked up trying to treat their illnesses. Before he knew about Angel Flight, Kevin says he was driving back and forth to MD Anderson for treatments every three weeks. You know, we were spending a lot of money going, you know, on trips going down there and back, you know, for gas, and plus at the time we didn't really have a a car that was really good on gas, so driving 11 hours one way, it, it takes a wear and tear on you, even if, uh, I mean, I would be in pretty good health that I could drive part of the way sometimes. And if she had to drive it all by herself, you just can't, you just can't do it. You, it could happen to any of us. It could happen to any of us to be in this situation where an unexpected circumstance puts us in a very, you know, unordinary, extraordinary situation. And that's 260 Echo Alpha, runway 35, clear the lane. Clear land, 350 Echo Alpha. Never know what tomorrow's going to bring when you're going to need a service like this. If it wasn't for Angel Flight, passengers like Kevin wouldn't be able to get the highest quality care available. Angel Flight has been very good to me, and uh, if there was ever anything I could do to pay him back, you know, I would. It's not just that they get the care they need. Angel Flight makes sure they get it exactly at the right time. Well, actually, the unique thing about Angel Flight is that we are coordinating flights and scheduling them based on the needs of the passenger. So that's one you know, really wonderful advantage and stress reliever that we're offering our passengers is we're setting it up when they need it versus a scheduled flight. Um, and we're able to do that through the generosity of volunteer pilots who are willing to drop, you know, whatever they're doing at work or with their family or, you know, recreationally to help somebody that they don't even know in need. And again, they do it at their own expense, so the passengers owe nothing. Other than a hug and a thank you and, uh, you know, whatever thanks they can give to our pilots is really the only payment required. And the people involved are just so kind and generous and when you have an opportunity to interface with people with those kind of hearts every day, it's, it makes the rest of the world um, just not nearly as enjoyable. Kevin agrees. He says the first pilot that flew him to MD Anderson told him. He said, he said I just do it because I care about people. And it just, it overwhelms me to be honest with you how generous these, these volunteer pilots are. They just give so much. It's nice to know that your title is, is a part of your life, but it's not, it doesn't have to define who you are. And I think what pilots get to do through Angel Flight further defines who they really are as a person. It's not just the pilots who are dedicated to this cause. Crystal has been with Angel Flight for nine years and says it changes her life every single day. Why do you do it? What do you get out of it? That's such a loaded question. <laughs> um, you know, I'm just impressed with our volunteers. Um, I'm impressed by the courage and the inspiring attitude that most of our passengers have. It's just, it's just a relief with the family, you know, knowing that I'm going to get there quick and get things taken care of, you know, that needs to be taken care of. Can you just give me, just in your time, a couple of the success stories that have really touched you or some of the flights that just really um, amazed you? Oh, I have so many of them. These pilots not only help these patients get physical care, some even provide spiritual care. Crystal was on one of the flights where she witnessed the power of that firsthand, a story she likes to call Michael's Mountains. It was for a little boy who was 10 years old 
dying of an inoperable brain tumor, and Michael was enthralled with mountains. That this was this kid's big thing, you know. He'd go to the hospital and he'd talk about mountains. He said he wanted to see mountains. When the nurses first heard him talking, they painted mountains on his walls. When one of the Angel Flight pilots heard about Michael's desire, he offered to fly him over the Rocky Mountains. The mother was just moved to tears. She thought it was fantastic that somebody wanted to do that. It's really at the point in his illness that he didn't have a whole lot of facial expression because he put on a lot of weight and it was hard to see small inflections in his face. When they arrived at one of the highest peaks, Crystal looked over. And I happened to be facing Michael and it was, it was just so moving because here's this kid who really can't even smile all that much and couldn't understand what he said and there's this one tear, you know, rolling down his cheek and he was so excited. After they got off the airplane, Michael's mother told Crystal the real reason he wanted to see the mountains. She said no, it's because he wanted to talk to God and he figured that the best way to do that would be to get to a mountain. And um, so you gave him that opportunity and I've got to tell you, it may save the rest of our lives. An incredibly moving experience to know that we touched that family in, you know, a way emotionally and spiritually that that really probably was a huge impact on that family's life. And Michael's not with us anymore, but I think about him all the time, especially whenever I see him out.